So there are three formations that are exposed at Tumbling Run. This is the first of them, the lowest of, of the three. It's called the New Market Formation. It's Ordovician in age, and it's the first unit deposited after a major continent-wide, global-wide transgression and regression. So then the seas rose again, and in those shallow seawaters, we see these uh, dove gray limestones that are the new market formation. A couple things to note. One is that they tend to be pretty um, uh, thickly bedded. Another is the color is this sort of dove gray, a really light colored gray. If you put acid on it, it fizzes vigorously, all right, telling you that this is basically essentially pure calcite. Right? There's very little mud in this rock, very little uh, in the way of anything like sand. I mean, there's no source of land to generate sand or mud anywhere nearby. So we're in a shallow carbonate bank, kind of like at stop number one, the Konakachig Formation. But that story will change as we head downhill and up section. Okay, I've climbed up onto the outcrop and I'm at a nice exposure of the contact between the New Market Formation and the Lincolnshire Formation. Remember, the New Market is older, it's dove gray, and it's very fine grained. The overlying Lincolnshire Formation is coarser grained, and you can see it's a little bit darker in color. This contact right here is a disconformity, indicating that erosion took place and removed some of the uppermost part of the New Market Formation before the Lincolnshire was laid down. You can see the coarser grain size and even brachiopod shells that were moved around as sedimentary particles in this higher energy setting. Higher up in the Lincolnshire, we see characteristic thin beds, only a few centimeters thick, and these distinctive black flint nodules. The little white stripes you see here are tension gashes that are part of the deformation associated with Allegheny and mountain building, the same force that tilted all these layers into their current orientation. So this layer here is something different. That's a layer of volcanic ash that's turned to a special kind of clay. We call it bentonite. You can see that the bentonite is a different color than the limestones above and below it. You can see it's tan and crumbly. Uh, it falls apart really readily. And that is an indication that it's much more uh, unstable under modern day earth surface conditions than the surrounding limestone. In terms of interpreting the geologic history, the bentonite is important because it implies that volcanic ash fell into our sedimentary basin, into this carbonate bank, at some point in the past. Some of these bentonites retain minerals that we can isotopically date and figure out when exactly this ash fall took place. There are several nice big bentonites as we get into the third and final formation here at Tumbling Run, which is called the Edinburgh Formation. It's de-vitrified volcanic ash. So in other words, it originally fell as volcanic ash, and then over time, the little glass particles that made up that ash were unstable, and they rotted, and they made this special clay. You can see limestone below and limestone above, sort of representing the uh, original sedimentary conditions. But then in between, we've got this ash layer that tells us that there must be volcanoes somewhere nearby. That's the signature of the approaching Taconian volcanic arc. And from this point up in the section, we see an increasing proportion of clastic sediment and a decreasing proportion of calcite. So the sedimentary system is shifting from being carbonate dominated to being siliciclastic dominated as the Taconian orogeny gets underway. So this is the Edinburgh Formation proper, and you can tell it because it has these alternating layers of shale, limestone, shale, limestone, shale, limestone, shale, limestone, shale, limestone, and so on. In other words, there's an increasing proportion of mud in this rock as compared to the stuff that we saw uphill lower in the section. That mud is coming from the rising Taconian Mountains off to the east. This is a pretty typical look at what the Edinburgh Formation looks like. It's got cobbly weathering as the limestone layers essentially break into cobbles relative to the shale layers in between. Sometimes these shale layers are called partings, but it gives the overall formation this kind of distinctive texture when it crops out. 
It's not big, strong cliffs like we saw with the Lincolnshire and the New Market Formation. Instead, it makes these sort of crumbly-looking outcrops. In terms of interpreting the geologic history, the take-home message here is there has to be a source for this extra clay that's showing up in the Edinburgh Formation. And the source for that clay is the weathering of the Taconian mountain range that's rising off to the east. Here's a typical look at uh, the color of the Edinburgh Formation. So don't pay attention to this weathered surface here that's really light colored. The fresh rock looks to be very, very, very dark in color. That dark color is an indication that it has more clay in it, perhaps more organic carbon, and that's thought to be a signature of deeper waters than what we started off with. If we put acid on it, it'll still fizz. So you can see that there's still plenty of calcite in this rock, but that will change as we go further up section into the overlying Martinsburg Formation.